Hi guys, it's Grant from Local Scraper, and today I want to walk you through the Foursquare Scraper. Um, once you open the program, it'll look a bit something like this. Um, I'll get started here, and I'll work my way to the right. The scrape target is which scraper you would like to use. Um, they both scrape Foursquare, but one is a quick scrape of the search results, and one is a full scrape of each listing page. So what I mean by that is we'll open up Chrome here, and we'll just pick something. We'll have it come up. Okay, the quick scrape will gather the information within this box. So you'll get the name, um, the, the rating, the address, the pricing, the category, and the image, and the URL. But you notice there's no phone number, so you won't get things like phone number or website or hours. So the difference between the scrapers is that the quick will scrape from this page and will scrape all of these at the same time. The full will visit each listing page like this and it will gather the information from here. So you will get the GPS coordinates, you'll get the website, you'll get the hours, the full address, uh, the features, the credit cards, the wheelchair, you get all the details there. Okay. Um, we have the keyword and location options. Uh, these two are tied together. So um, if you want to do a really quick scrape, say like what we just put in before, um, over here it's like I'm looking for, and the location, you would put them in here. So we would say something like pizza and New York one. New York, New York. If that was all I wanted, I can now hit the start scrape and the program will go to Foursquare and type in pizza in New York in the, the, the boxes there. Um, if you were going to do more than this, you can clear these out. Um, say you wanted to use the custom URL. Um, this would mean that you would go to um, foursquare.com. You would put in your search. You say the same thing. York. And what we would do now is we would take this URL up here from the address bar, and we would copy that, and we would paste it into this box, and now we will run the scrape. Um, that means that the scraper will start on this page, it'll load this page, and it'll scrape the same results you saw before. So a good um, reason to use the custom URL is if you really wanted to see the results you were going to get before you typed it in, because if you just typed in pizza in, you know, NY or something, it might not work. But since you went to the website and you knew it worked, you copied the URL, you put it in here, you saw exactly what you were going to get ahead of time. Okay. We also have the keyword list and lo location list options. Um, this allows you to run a semi-automated uh, scraping of the program. So while the keyword and location only does one at a time, so this is one scrape, um, you hit start, it stops. Over here, if you make a list of keywords, a list of locations, and hit start scrape, it will cycle through each one of those. So here, I'll show you really quick. Here is a list of keywords. It should be made in Notepad, and you should have uh, a couple keywords in here. Now, if we open up a list of locations. You'll see it's also a notepad, and we have several locations which Foursquare should be able to figure out what we want. Now if you notice, something you have to do when using keyword lists and location lists is they must line up. You see, because the, the scraper will match up line by line. So it's going to look for pizza, and it's going to look for it here. And it's going to look for uh, dinner, and it's going to look for it here. So line one to line one, line 2 to line 2, line 5 to line 5, line 10 to line 10. Um, it will not intermix these, it won't shuffle them around, it won't do every permutation of the lists. Um, it will be up to you to make uh, lists that correspond to each search that you want. Um, even if you have the location repeated 10 times in 10 different keywords, that's what is needed. So if I wanted Singapore for all four of these, all four of these lines would have to say Singapore as well. The custom URL list is kind of the same as using the custom URL and the other thing. Is once again we're going to make a list 
here is a list of a couple URLs. Here's four of them. Uh, you'll see this is like Key West, and it's for something. Um, food. And then down here we have like Singapore, and it was for tacos. So as you see, we have these different URLs, and each one is on its own line. And once again, if you feed this list into the program by clicking here, telling it where the list is, and then hitting start, it will run the scrape using your options through the first thing, then it will save the CSV, and then it will start the second, and then the third, and then the fourth item on the list kind of thing. So this allows you to semi-automate the program so you can have it scraping while you're gone or sleeping or something like that. Um, do keep in mind, though, that you need to keep the list small. You can't put in 20,000 uh, keywords and locations or something like that. They really should be kept at most to like 10 or 15 lines because the program will have to go to the website over and over again, and it will go through thousands of pages in the time. So, you know, 10, 10 items could have meant 10,000 pages that the scraper could have gone to or even more. And by then, it'll just be a little slow. I mean, even if you were using Chrome or Firefox and in a couple hours you went to 10,000 pages, it might still get a little bogged down. So between running lists, I highly recommend you close the program and then reopen it to free up the memory and then run another list of uh, 10 to 15 again. All right, um, records found um, will tell you how many records the scraper has how many business listings the scraper has found. Um, that is part of a step one where it's gathering the listings um, from the website. So for full scrape here um, on this page there would be 30 of these guys. You see if we go down there's 30 of them. So up here it would say records found 30. But nothing has been saved to the CSV yet because we're using the full scrape and we're just gathering the, the URLs for each business. So for current record is what business listing we're on. So right here would say something like 30 and right here would say something like 10 which means we've gone through 10 different business pages now and we have 10 different ones saved to our CSV file. So when using the full scrape keep an eye on the current record. Now if you're using the quick scrape there is no current record because it does it all automatically. It goes super fast. Um, so you would just keep an eye on the records found because the quick script will do them 30 at a time as it does each page. The current proxy is self-explanatory. It's the current proxy being used by the program. The max threads is the number of threads that you have set to be the, um, the maximum. And the current threads is how many are currently being used. And I'll get into that in a second. Okay, obviously the start button, the stop button, and in here is the nice log where the program will tell you what it's doing and where it's at. Down here is a little browser. Right now it's just the README page for the product. Um, as soon as you hit start, this will become Foursquare. And as soon as this program starts um, saving any data, you'll see a nice table down here with the uh, with the columns and the, and the results. So as soon as you see a table in this bottom thing with the results, you'll know that the scraper has saved the data to a CSV file already. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay, now if we go to the main options, here we have the proxy options. If you'd like to use proxies, and I highly recommend you do, especially if you're planning on multi-threading, you're gonna to wanna to click use proxies, and then you're gonna to wanna to tell the program where your proxy list is. Um, you can test the proxies if you like, um, it's not needed. Um, if you've purchased the proxies and you know they work, then you can leave this blank. Um, if you just want to test them anyway, go ahead and check the box, you know, it won't hurt. Proxies need to be in IP and port fashion, which means they need to look like this. Here's the IP address, here's the little semicolon thing, and here is the port. Now you notice there is no username or password attached to any of these which means you need to set up IP authorization with your proxy provider. Um, they all do this. You just give them the IP address of the computer that you want to have access to the proxies, 
and they will automatically allow the IP address to connect to the proxy without having to ask for a username or password. If you are a hide my ass user, um, you can click hide my ass here. And then in here, you'll want to put in about the time it takes for you to disconnect and reconnect to hide my ass. Um, the default is 45 seconds, but you might need a little longer. Um, and what this will do is at the start of each scrape, you should already have the hide my ass client open and you should already have it connected. Now you'll hit this button, um, check that box, you'll go over, you'll start the scrape, and it will disconnect your hide my ass. It'll rotate through whatever your next server is, and it will reconnect to hide my ass, which is why you need this wait time. So if that disconnect reconnect takes longer than 45 seconds for some reason, you'll want to put something in here like 60 seconds, you know, a minute, 90 seconds, something like that. And if you're using the list options uh, over here, um, each list item, it will disconnect and reconnect to hide my ass, changing your IP address. Um, but you still only have the one IP address. Um, with the proxy options, if you're using proxies and you gave it a list, for every listing page that the program visits, it will use a new proxy on the list. So say if you had a um, hundred a hundred records found, right? The program would use um, a different proxy. Uh, it'll cycle through your proxies. I mean, if you had a hundred proxies, it'll cycle through them. If you had ten, each proxy would go to ten uh, of the listing pages. You see, but if you had hide my ass, you only have one IP address per connection. So uh, that one hide my ass IP address would end up going to all 100 um, listing pages. So I do recommend using proxies over hide my ass. Um, on the README page, I recommend places where I buy my proxies from, uh, places that I've used for years now, and places that other customers use as well. Totally fine. Over here, we have the scraper settings. This is the wait time between page loads. Um, the default right now is two to three seconds. If you find that your proxies are slow or your hide my ass or Foursquare or your internet or for some reason something seems a little slow, you'll want to change this to something higher. Um, say if you put six seconds here, that means each page that it goes through of results, it will wait six seconds before going on to the next page. This also means once it gets to stage two or it's visiting each business page, it will wait six seconds between opening a new thread and starting uh, opening another business listing page. So you would open one page, you'd wait six seconds, open another page, wait six seconds, that kind of thing. Over here we have the threads. Um, a thread is sort of like a multiplier. Um, if we leave it at one, we have one worker, let's say, we have one worker who will be going out and gathering the data for us. So if we had the hundred um, business listings, this one worker would go and go to all hundred business listings. If we had say five, each we would have, now have five workers and those hundred listings would be divided up, which also means the program is now five times faster it takes five times more resources. Now you can up these threads um, to something like 10 or 15, but you have to make sure you're using proxies. Because again, each thread will use its own proxy and it will have its own IP address. If you're using hide my ass, each thread will use the same IP address and Foursquare will go, hey, wait a sec, how is this guy going to 10 pages on our website? at one time over and over and over again, it's only one guy, like we know it's one guy. So if you're going to use multi-threading and you're going to set it to higher than one or two, like one or two is what you should stay at if you're using hide my ass or if you're using no, no VPN or proxies. If you're using proxies, you can set this up. Um, personally, I go with like 10 to 15 just so my whole computer doesn't kind of bogged down and it gives the the proxies uh, good use you know um, max listings is how many 
listings you want before the program stops and moves on to the next process. Um, so say there was 100 business listings, but you only wanted the top 10 for all of your keywords on Foursquare. So you'd want to put something in here like 10. The only problem with this is that the program gathers all of the URLs at once off the page at the same time. And as you saw over here, there's 30 of these things. So the program is not going to stop at exactly 10. You'll probably get 30 or 60 before it realizes that it's gone to the next page and you've gone over the number. But it's better than the program scraping 1,000 or 2,000 if you really only wanted the top 10. So it saves you on resources and it saves you on time. Um, your file options down here um, to timestamp the files. This will add a date and time to the end of each file name. You'll just check it like this. Um, this is good because the program, if say you're using a custom URL, will save the file as like foursquare-customurl.csv. And if you kept running custom URLs without renaming any of these files, it's just going to overwrite them because it doesn't know that they were different. Now, for the keyword and location, we, can, we know the keyword and location, so we put that as part of the file name. But um, when using a single custom URL, or when using the same keyword and location, uh, there is a chance that you will overwrite your files. So you'll want to check this box, which will add a timestamp, like I said, and so nothing will be overwritten. Um, by default, the program saves all CSV files into the same folder as it is located. So if it's in a folder on your desktop, that is where the CSV files will also be saved. Um, if you'd like them saved somewhere else, just click here and tell the program where you want them to save to. Uh, this could be anywhere. It could be Dropbox, it could be in My Documents, it could be in some other working folder. You know, anything that you have access to, you can change the folder here. Okay. Um, finally, on the scraper options, we have the email and social options. Um, scrape website will visit the business website and look for social accounts and email accounts. So when we say that the program gets emails, this is how we get them. Because Foursquare does not provide any email over here as a contact for this business. But they did provide this website. So if you check this box and the business does have a website, the scraper will send the worker to the website and we will go through the website not completely, but we'll look where you were supposed to look, in the About Us, and the Contact Us pages, on the home page, things like that. And we'll try to root out an email for you. We'll also find a Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus accounts um, if they're there. Okay, um, I think that's about it. Um, more stuff is covered on the README page below. If you want to know more about proxies or hide my ass or lists, that's also included on the README page. This is just the beginning walkthrough to go over all the parts of the program. Okay, I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll uh, see you later.